What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about what to do when you land a new web design client. So should you get locked into an endless series of emails? Probably not. Should you go meet them? Yeah, if you can. Um, and three, should you have a video call? Almost certainly it saves everybody time. Now, how do we get people booked into that video call? The common problem you have here is you, there's, there's maybe three or four stakeholders in their team and there's two or three of you in your team you will need to meet and finding a time is going to be really difficult going back and forth on email. So that's why we use an online booking system. So I'm going to go through the one that we use now and I'm going to show you a couple of other options. After that, we're going to run through our top 10 questions to ask a new web design client. And this is to help you gauge whether the project is for you, are you guys a good fit, is the budget right, what kind of design you're going to have to create, do you have the development skills to create this, so on and so forth. So let's go. Right, so this is our website. And as you can see at the top in our navigation bar, we have a very accessible link for booking a meeting. If a client clicks on this any time of the day, they can just come in here and book themselves directly into a meeting. Now this calendar is synced directly with mine and Nick's calendars. So it's only showing times that the two of us are available in 30 minute windows. This makes it very easy for a client to just come in, click on here, fill in their name and their email, description of their project, press confirm booking. What is wonderful about this is that this creates a Google Meet link, so a meeting preset up, which goes directly into the client's calendar, directly into my calendar and Nick's calendar. We haven't had to speak to them. We haven't had to have email chains, no phone calls, anything like that. It's just done. So this is the beauty of an online booking system. This is done through You Can Book Me. So you can see the website here and it's youcanbook.me. If we have a look at the pricing, we will see that it is $10 per calendar per month. So we pay for two of those. This allows us to set up as many meetings as we want. We currently have about 12 where they're broken down into sort of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 and 60 minutes with a combination of Nick and myself, just myself or just Nick, giving clients loads of options. So when we're kind of messaging clients in Slack or an email, we can say, hey, we need to chat about this. Here's a 15 minute link, just book in when you can in the next couple of days, it's worked really well. Another option you can do is Calendly, which a lot of people use and are familiar with. And I think the UI is a little bit nicer, but the backend setup was a little bit more complicated. If we have a look at the pricing here, you kind of got either $8 or $12, $12. So it's up to you which one to go for. You can book me, you see is kind of directly in the middle. And we just found their support to be a little bit better. There are plenty of different services like this out there. So go ahead and do your research. We just thoroughly recommend you can book me. We think it's brilliant. So let's get into the questions. What should we ask these clients when we get into that meeting? Question one, tell us about your company. Why do you need a website and what are you hoping to achieve with it? This gives the client the chance to just talk about their company. They will most likely answer a lot of the follow-up questions that we have. So you just take notes as they talk, just quick notes, however you want. and get a feel for the company. It might be something that you don't, don't agree with at all. It might be something that you absolutely love. This is obviously vital. You need to understand what you're going to be designing for. So next question, what functionality do you need? Do you need a shop or a members area? Is there a technical wish list that you have? This question is so important because when we didn't ask this question, we would sometimes get to the end of development. We'd finish the site, we'd launch it. And this is no joke. Clients have said, where's the shop? And we said, excuse me. They said, oh yeah, we need a shop and we need people to be able to buy t-shirts and stuff. And we're like, you literally haven't told us that at all. So straight away, what functionality do you need? Is there anything crazy this website needs to be able to do? We need to go away and do our research and find out how we're gonna approach this. Question number three, is there a timeline we need to stick to? Obviously, this is super important. So we said, you know, we can work to deadlines if we need to, but if it's a really short deadline, we might need to leave something out and then we could perhaps revisit this in a couple of months. We can do a version two of the website, something like that. Really important to get expectations set as early as possible. Question four, do you have any growth plans? How are you planning on growing your business in the future so that we can take that into consideration and help you get there? Anybody can just take someone's website, redesign it and rebuild it. What we really want to try and do here is add as much value as we can. So they may say, yes, we're planning on quadrupling our revenue. And you say, brilliant, how are you going to do that? And they're going to say, we want to become thought leaders in 
X market and you could say, brilliant, let's, let's create your blog. Let's do X, Y, and Z, and we can try and support you in that goal. When we do that, clients, we've almost exceeded clients' expectations in the initial meeting. They're really happy. Chances are they're going to go with us. That's the plan anyway. Question five, what's the main call to action? So we need to ask the client, what do you think you want people to be doing on this site? Is it purchasing a subscription to something? Is it creating a membership? Is it just to find out about your company and sort of understand how experienced you are? Something like this. So we find out what the main call to action is, and then we need to find out what the secondary call to action is. So, okay, once they've done this thing, or if they're not going to do this thing, what's the other thing we want them to take away here? So this might be just want to show off, you know, the level of our work. So maybe we then think, okay, we should put up a lot of case studies. Maybe there should be, you know, a preview of some of the case studies quite high up the homepage, something like this. Or maybe we need to show off the amazing clients they've worked with. Maybe they've worked with Nike, Reebok, Adidas, and stuff like this. These are great logos to have at the top on the scrolling carousel or something like this. This stuff is super important. Question seven, let's talk about your audience. So not necessarily the target audience right now. This conversation can come later, but we're sort of thinking about Somebody's coming to your website, what are they trying to do? Are they coming on here to just get your email address quickly? If so, if you know that's something people have told you all the time, maybe we think about where we put that. Let's not bury it at the bottom of a contact page, which is inside a drop down menu. Um, this could be they're coming on here because they want to read our articles. So maybe let's put a few of these articles on the homepage. Let's make it really obvious how to find them. So this is like a UX kind of thing. We're starting to think about this. We're showing the client that we understand websites and what people need. And a lot of the time, clients haven't thought about this stuff. So you can kind of prod them and try and extract that information from them. They're usually very happy. So question eight, do you have any direct competitors? Now, sometimes they just sort of deer in the headlights and they don't really know. Sometimes they say, yes, we've got 10, here's the list. And you can say, don't worry about this right now, but if you could just make a note and email us in the next couple of days, a list of competitors and their websites, that would be brilliant. Question nine, are there any inspiration websites? Are there any sites that you like the look of and you would like to draw us to draw inspiration from? And what is it that you like about these sites or you don't like about these sites? And we're not doing this to say, oh, let's just, let's just sort of, amalgamate all of these websites and then we've created yours. We're not definitely stealing stuff. We're drawing some inspiration from them. We're seeing they might show us five sites that have got a lot of motion in. So we know, okay, we need to start thinking about animation, interactions, how are we going to factor that into our proposal? How are we going to build this? This kind of stuff. And lastly, the big ticket question, do you have a budget for this? This stuff is so important. What we're going to do after we've done this is we're going to take this information away. We're going to populate a sitemap, which takes some time. We're going to start thinking about the user experience. We're going to put together a really detailed proposal with a breakdown of costs and all the, all the different stuff we're going to have to do on this project. Who's going to be working on it? How many hours, et cetera, et cetera. This stuff takes time. We don't want to waste our time. We don't want to waste their time. If they've got a really low budget, then perhaps they're not for us and we can send them off to some more affordable solutions elsewhere. Um, sometimes they do tell us a budget and they say, yes, we've got X set aside for this. Is this okay? And we say, you know, yeah, that's brilliant. Or that's a little bit low, but maybe we can work with this. Um, there are always solutions. So we need to kind of get everybody's expectations set. And if they if they don't know and they ask, why are you asking this? We say we, we need to explain to them that, you know, good design takes time. And we explain to them why it's worthwhile investing in their look and feel. Perhaps we're pitching for a rebrand or something like this. And we can go into detail about why we think this would work for them, the benefits for their business and why it's a worthy investment. This is really good. It shows that you're confident, you're not hiding away and you're not just going to sort of email a proposal over and then close your eyes and cross your fingers. So we're just being really confident from the outset. We say, we know our worth. We know what we can do for you. Are you happy with this? So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, of course, please leave them in the comments down below. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy website design.